So uh, thanks for coming out. My name is Ryan Connolly. I teach the construction program here at Kasumas River College. I was proud to be part of our tiny house uh, 2016 competition team. Our whole design was based around our tuck away bed and what it, the way it utilized extra space here. It's, it slides out from underneath that back slider door in the deck back there. But it did drive other kinds of design factors, like in order to have an actual full-size door above the bed, it caused us to go with relatively high ceilings. So that played into part of our lighting design. Our windows are up high. Right now, we're late afternoon. We've got plenty of natural light. Uh, like I said, just a quick demonstration. You know, this whole frame just comes out. And then during the day, if you have friends over and you want to go out on your deck, the plan was to be able to utilize these steps. We have this shoe box, what we called it, just a little storage over here. But in order to get out, we have this extra step that we set on the shoe box, roll over the back of the couch, and voila, you got yourself a set of stairs to get out, out onto the deck. Where we are now, it's not a beautiful sight out there, but it, in most places, it'd be nice to be out there. We also just, it caused us to have relatively high ceilings and uh, I don't know, I think it gives us kind of a warm feel. Seems a little bit more livable and not quite so cramped. And then a couple other features of space saving design. We, the architect had designed kind of linear cabinets. Um, I think in the rendering here, you could, I think there's some, this is some of our architect students' um, preliminary drawings and you can see even in the original renderings for space, a lot of linear stuff, so that kind of drove us, even though we were, ended up with warmer, more earthy tones. This was kind of our inspiration for how we did our cabinets. We've got our entertainment center here behind you. And then kind of all this stuff was hand built in our wood shop, the cubbies, and all these nice little places to store your clean shirts, socks, all that kind of important stuff that makes life easy to live. This, this day bed, or day, I'm sorry, this day couch was just um, one of the ways we concealed the wheel wells within our trailer. This entertainment center also does the same thing. And then this was one of the other creative uses of space. You guys have heard of a Murphy bed. Well, part of our design was to make a decorative art piece that actually served as uh, a Murphy table, which comes down, the art piece stays out facing the door end. Voila, now when you're cooking in the kitchen, here, why don't you trade me places? I might get a better idea of exactly how this works with our kitchen area. You know, we've got a nice, you know, livable, operable kind of kitchen sink. Um, our conduction cooktops are down here, you know, we could plug in, do your cooking. We had a microwave, even though during the competition it wasn't part of it, but it, we knew it kind of added a, a kind of warm feel, matching fridge. Again, even this is a relatively nice amount of space, but when needed, you know, wife comes home from work, she still wants to do some, some work from home, she could sit here and plug in her laptop or vice versa. So, and then when you're entertaining with more people, you don't quite need the, the table sur the surface area. Now you kind of go back to your smaller size kitchen. A lot of, you know, all the way to the ceiling kind of cabinetry, a lot of room for storage up there. Um, had intended for kind of a spice rack or something, kind of ran out of time. Again, full cabinets that we made. And then we're pretty proud of our bathroom as well. We've got a, a fully functioning, nice shower head that you could step up into. There's a, a step stool that allows you in. And then I'm going to step out to show you how the rest of this, if you wouldn't mind, just, I'll let you go in. There's really not enough room for two, but if you wouldn't mind checking that sliding door, it's pretty pretty smooth too how you get in there afford yourself the privacy and then the space becomes much bigger once you're in there that's a composting toilet from one of our sponsors nature's head I could tell you the details about it but it's it's pretty interesting according to them a couple of two people could go six months without having to change the uh, part of that that compost the solid waste so that's another whole part of the story but if we try to go with the, the field there's a lot of other energy measures I'd be happy to show you 
um, on the roof. This is a, a constantly running ventilation fan. It's on right now. It's very, very quiet. It's a uh, Panasonic Whisper fan. It gives us our required mechanical ventilation for such a small, tight space. And uh, it's set at 30 CFM, which is the ASHRAE standard for our space is 22 CFM. Anyway, glad you could come out and take a look. I'm very proud of our students for that. Oh yeah, so uh, part of the way we were dealing, you know, our, our end user in our design was a Sacramento family. Anybody who from Sacramento knows it's hot here, so we chose to use a, a ductless heat pump, oftentimes referred to as a mini split. The condenser unit is out on the tongue of the trailer. This is one of LG's newer designs that actually kind of poses as a piece of art, but and it's much more decorative than most of the interior heads. This thing, the, the picture frame leans out, the side fins open up, and this thing actually circulates air from behind the picture frame and then ejects out your conditioned air. Right now we've got it set in air condition mode. You can adjust fan speed, you can actually adjust fan or yes. You, if you were uncomfortable sitting here with cold air blowing on your head, you could actually change the wind direction all based on the remote, but it, within very few seconds the, the refrigerant cycle is already moving and you can feel very cold air on this warm fall afternoon. Fully functioning doesn't take long to run. Our house is so airtight, we did blow a door on it. It's so airtight that a lot of times we kind of feel like the refrigerator's actually the one that's heating it up in the evening. But running in the air conditioner during the day can run like this or we can set it to heat mode as well. This is also the heater. Yeah, so the outside is uh, charred cedar siding. It's a Japanese a centuries old Japanese technique called shusugiban, where you char the wood to preserve it. It uh, makes it insect resistant, fire resistant, and chemical free. Once you, we rubbed uh, boiled linseed oil over it as a sealant. This is the Outback uh, Flex 60 package. I'll show you our solar array on the roof, but uh, the solar array sends down its charge. This is our charge controller up here. Um, charge controller kind of tells you what kind of amperage and voltage you're getting coming off your array, but it's, it's essentially taking a, a direct current flow. We're getting 90 volts. It's pretty late in the day. We're down only two amps because the sun's down so far, but what it does is it converts our array, our, our solar energy, into a, a 12 volt charge on our 12 volt battery bank. We've got 500 amp hour storage on two lead acid batteries. And then on demand, when you pull, like when I turned on the air conditioner, the inverter allowed the direct, this, this electricity in the batteries to come up and inverted it into alternating current and sent it in. And then behind the Murphy table was the uh, interior 110 volt AC service panel that this thing feeds. And then we've got branch circuits. Interestingly enough, on the roof, we've got Basically about, about a 1.3 kW array with four panels. Uh, most people would probably rate that closer to a, a one kilowatt, but one of, the, one of our greatest technologies that we brought to the competition was, you can see the water pipes hanging out of these back two. That's actually uh, our, our partner at Saliva Energy Group down in the Bay Area has this new patented system where they create they manufacture their own aluminum glycol tanks that adhere to the back of a over-the-counter, you know, modern solar electrical PV panel. They adhere their tanks on the back and then we pump glycol through the tanks and it absorbs all the heat off the back of the panel, which is great because then we have a, it's a closed system solar thermal loop that we heat our domestic hot water with that heat through a heat exchanger. But what most people aren't aware of is that when you extract that much heat from the back of a solar panel, by cooling it off, the electrical output goes up significantly. There's a great, there's a significant drop off in super high heat with heat degradation on the panels themselves. So not only does that heat give us the, the domestic hot water, it also boosts our PV output by 30% on those two.